It's a sight that grips everyone who's seen it. A massive tall ship in full sail in some of Canada's most beautiful scenery outside Victoria, British Columbia. Today a helicopter circles back for a second look at the majestic view. Well, a tall ship is, a, is sort of a loose definition. Um, our ships, uh, one of them is a design from 1778, so that gives you a sense of the era, uh, although the ship was built in 1986. So these are, are new ships that are built uh, in sort of an old style. And it's not just the ship's look that is ancient, the mechanics of sailing are old fashioned too. Modern sailboats will have all kinds of winches and electronic gadgetry that's going to help assist and actually can make things quite easy, whereas our ships uh, are, are traditional ships. So it's a lot of work and of course the size and scale of the ship uh, means that we need a whole classroom full of kids or a whole group full of kids uh, to, to actually physically sail the ship. And that's what happens every year on this floating classroom. In spring, schools come out for a week-long, once-in-a-lifetime experience, and in summer, longer voyages are available for young people aged 13 to 27. SALT is the Sail and Life Training Society, and we're a Christian organization that helps young people grow and develop by teaching them how to sail tall ships. And every year, 2,000 young people come and learn to sail one of our two tall ships. All right, we need haulers and tailors. The goal of the program is what's called life training, teaching young people values such as a strong work ethic, responsibility, facing fears and cooperation. Our desire is for young people to grow and develop in a, in a whole host of ways. Certainly spiritual growth is part of that. Uh, we want them to grow relationally, as I said, and, and in community. We want them to learn about teamwork. Uh, a ship is a great environment for them to figure out that, you know, you just can't accomplish anything really significant without the help of others and a ship like this is an example of that. It's an adventure some kids have only dreamed about, bringing to mind pirates, the bravery of ancient explorers, and storms at sea. But the danger here is modern day and requires a strict safety lesson even before leaving the dock. The real challenge for us is we're always sailing with amateurs, but everything's bigger. Um, so this boom here behind us, this boom is about uh, 60 feet long and it weighs about a ton. So, and it's hooked on to about 2,400 square feet of sail. So if we don't deal with things early, it can be a, a liability, serious liability. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's teaching kids how to, how to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, these kids, they respond right away. It's a foreign environment, so they tend to listen better while they're out here. And uh, they know that they are an active part of running the boat. So, they know that we can't run it without them, so there's a real sense of ownership there as well, and a, and a sense of pride as well, that they're making this boat go. Sailing experience is not a prerequisite. Some of these kids have never even seen an ocean. But over the course of their journey, they'll get the chance to try out every position on the ship, starting on day one. We break them up into three different watch groups, and a watch group is always on duty 24 hours a day and so the kids uh, get a chance to cycle through watches. They get time off but when they're on duty uh, they will get involved in uh, taking the radio room and listening to the radio and uh, they will be on bow watch to watch out for obstacles that are coming or on the wheel actually taking the wheel of the ship and of course all of that is under the direction of the crew. And for those who plan to while away the week working on their tan, enjoying scenery and sleeping, well, they were in for a big surprise. We actually have to like do dishes and like put up the sails. Physically, it's really brutal because you have to get up early, you have to do night watch, you have to lift the sails. Yeah, you're always busy. They uh, gave us lessons and stuff, and then we took a test on sail training. It was our junior, and it was pretty hard like all the parts of the boat and the sails and traffic and all that. It's a lot of hard work though to put up the sails and stuff but um, you get a taste of what it's like to be a sailor so it's pretty cool. Salt operates two ships, the Pacific Swift and this one, the Pacific Grace. The Grace was actually built in-house by Salts, which comes in handy when repairs are needed. We had volunteers working on the boat, we had crew members working on the boats, so the guys are actually sailing the boat or the guys that built the boat and uh, ultimately it's the kids that are making, making the boat come alive, you know. So as soon as these kids come on, this is home. And they uh, will have kids that have sailed with us five, six years ago that the Grace is still their, their home. You know, they've been on some of the other boats and, and they still want to come back here. You know, they still love the boat for, for what it is. But the real magic of the Pacific Grace comes from the so-called floating family that's created by so many living and working in such close quarters. Girl power. 
Well, you know, we've had teachers say to us that kids grow closer together in five days on the ship than they do throughout that entire year in the classroom. And I think it's just being together in a challenging and unfamiliar environment um, and being themselves. They come on board, uh, you know, in their, in their all decked out in their nice clothing and makeup and all of that. And by the end of the week, uh, they haven't had a shower since Monday morning. It's now Friday. And so uh, that image that they're trying to present is pretty hard to keep up on the ship. It changes everything and, and they, they learn to be themselves, uh, learn to connect with kids, other kids in their class that maybe they hadn't been part of their social circle before and, and bond them together. And that was true on this voyage as well, as I asked kids about the best part of their experience. Hanging out with everybody and getting to know them all better, like, and seeing them not so much in the school environment, but like just being themselves a lot more. It's really good. I've learned that you have to be more patient with other people because sometimes when you're stuck with them, you have to just deal with it. Yeah, and if they have anything that bothers you, you just have to tough it out. We're doing all the work here. Are you pulling? Captain Tony Anderson has been with Salts for 26 years and says the goal of staff and crew is to make young sailors feel accepted, encouraged, and loved. If you ask kids that come back regularly with us, it's not so much for the, for, the, for the sailing or for the beautiful areas that we're sailing with the wildlife, it's usually for the community that they're coming back in. And kids will regularly say, you know, this, is, this has been one of the first times that I can be the person I really know that I am and still make friends, still, still be a valued part of the community. There's inherent value in them just, just for who they are. And for some of them, that's... It's the first time they've ever experienced that, sadly enough. The program is faith-inspired, but welcomes people from every background. We do a lot of public schools as well uh, during the year, as well as Christian private schools, and just to be able to provide the same program, like no matter what, our day doesn't really change. We still pray and we still sing grace before meals and um, in the evening, like. We do a big kind of mug up and pull out guitars and stuff and there's all sorts of worship songs thrown in there. I think we're trying to model, particularly within SALTS, a, a faith that's real, a faith that addresses the world that we're in and uh, responds to the world that we're in. And they're getting, they're getting um, an introduction into that faith. They're getting an introduction into what it means to respond as a, as a Christian into the, into the world that we're living in. And they see that first within the community on the boat. Um, but they can make connections. They can make connections at home. They can say, oh yeah, when this happened on the boat, you know, it was a completely different feeling. And some of them will go and they'll pursue that on their own. And it's the connections at home that SALT staff really aim for, taking time before they leave to talk about what they've learned and how it might impact behavior in future. It's a great um, exercise we do, usually at the end of the trip, it's an edification ex exercise. So they'll sit around the table with their watch and the watch officer will initiate it and essentially they pick one kid at a time and they go through the whole bunch and uh, everybody's got to lift this kid up somehow, they've got to edify this kid. They realize, wow, there's a, there's a huge amount of power in, in lifting people up and, and you know, finding out and expressing the positives of someone that, even for some of these kids, they've been together for five or six years in school, you know, so. But it's the first time they've ever done that in a kind of a community context, so. The journey for these kids is over, and as they prepare to go home and shower, staff know they're leaving with new friendships, fresh sailing skills, sore muscles, and an experience they won't soon forget. Three, two, one. For more information on the program, or if you want to participate in a week at sea, go to their website at salts.ca. In Victoria, British Columbia, Cheryl Weber, 100 Huntley Street.